everyone, welcome to the week 5 video for Act 231. This week we started talking about annuities, which is a huge portion of the course. We are always in this course talking about annuities certain, which means the payments are guaranteed to occur. There's no risk of default or someone not being alive to make their payments or anything like that. And we started off by looking at level annuities, which means that the payment is equal. An annuity is just a sequence of payments at regular intervals, so every year or every month or every half year, anything like that. And a level annuity is where those payments are the same amount. So there's two kinds of annuities. Annuities due are ones where the payment is made at the beginning of each time period, and immediate annuities are ones where the payment is made at the end of each time period. Kind of confusing, it seems backwards, but that's what the terminology is. So with each of these cases, we can actually figure out the present value, or even the accumulated value at the end of that time period, of that series of regular payments. And all four of these formulas here come from the formula for the sum of a geometric series. In all of the cases, we just get a geometric series with n terms, and we can just use the formula, and we've got these really nice results coming out. If you ever forget one of the formulas, you can just use the geometric series, and everyone knows that. So the notation that we use is an, a present value is a sim, an, an A symbol, and if there are two dots over it, it means it's an annuity due. So the payments are made at the beginning. If there are no dots, it means immediate, and the payments are made at the end. And S is what we use for the future value or the accumulated value of that same cash flow. So there are those four nice results there that we get from the formula for the geometric series. We looked at some examples of dealing with calculating the present value or accumulated value of a sequence of payments, figuring out knowing what the present value is, what the payment is going to have to be in order to pay off a loan or save up enough money, that kind of thing. And then finally looking at an unknown number of payments. And that's where it gets a little bit complicated, because it's never going to work out to be an exact number of payments. There's going to be a little bit extra that you have to put in at the end, an additional contribution. So you always solve for n first, the number of payments, round it down, and then figure out what that additional payment is going to have to be. From there we looked at perpetuities, which are just annuities that have no end date. So the payments actually keep going forever at this regular interval. So every year forever, you get a certain level payment. And there are perpetuities due and immediate, just like with annuities. A perpetuity due would have one payment right now, and then payments forever. A perpetuity immediate would have the first payment starting at the end of the current period. And in both cases, we can get these results here, and they just come from uh, looking at the sum of an infinite geometric series. Because the ratio is going to be less than 1, v is always less than 1, we're going to have that converge to these really nice formulas right there. Then on Friday, we looked at deferred annuities, which is where the payments don't actually begin until some time in the future. So there are still n payments, but the first one of them occurs at time k, and the last one of them occurs at time n plus k minus 1. There are a number of different ways to value this deferred annuity. We could think of it as an annuity due at time k, and then discounting that back to time 0 by multiplying it by v to the k, or we could think of it as an immediate annuity starting at time k minus 1, and then take it back to time 0 by multiplying by v to the k minus 1. Yet another way to think about it is imagine that the payments are continuing from time 0 all the way up to time n plus k minus 1. But then subtract off the payments that aren't actually made. So you can use a difference method to calculate the value of that deferred annuity as well. Whichever way you like best, that's the way you can think of it. And then, speaking of valuing annuities on dates other than during the period, deferred annuities are looking at the value before the payments start, but we might also want to look at the value after the payments end, or even right in the middle of the payments. And in this case, it's really easy. The principle is always the same. All you have to do is find the value at any one time. For example, the present value times 0 is a good default to take it to. And then if you want it at time t, then bring it forward by multiplying by 1 plus i to the t. So you can always shift the value around based on uh, what time you're looking at and what time you've already taken it to. So that's everything for this week. I'll see you on Monday.